Welcome everyone to Almost Cancelled. I am Peter and I'm here to talk about Squid Game Episode 2. It's called Hell. Yes, I was going to wait till the end, but a couple of people asked for a review of each episode. And luckily, I hadn't watched Episode 3 yet. I watched Episode 2 yesterday. But I hadn't gotten to Episode 3 yet, so I could still offer my thoughts on Episode 2 without the, uh... You know, without the foreknowledge of what's to come. And truth be told, I had thoughts. I have a lot of thoughts on Episode 2. I think there's a lot of interesting things going on in this show. Uh, episode 2 is surprising to me. Uh, th there's actually something that happens in this episode that I did not predict, I did not see coming, and by the end of the episode, I kind of wanted to applaud the uh, the writers for making the choice they did. Um, and by that, I'm referring to the fact that the characters in the game, who are obviously all terrified after what happened last episode, um, like, are begging for forgiveness, they want to be, you know, let to go home, they, they don't want to play the game anymore, they're all shit scared. Uh, but the good son character, um, noticed that in the, the consent form that if they voted and had a majority of people who wanted to stop the game, the game would be stopped. And he puts this forth, but they show them all of the money that they're going to win, and it's, you know, billions and billions. And it's like, okay, we have to put this to a vote, so they all vote. I don't think I've been as surprised at an outcome of a, such a binary, like, option in a, in a story. You know, will A happen or will B happen? Uh, in this case, should they stay or sh should they go? Stop, don't start singing the song. <laughs> I'm saying that to myself more than you. Um, because ultimately, it's 50-50 pretty much the whole way. It's going back and forth. Notably, our main character, 456, chooses to go home. He hits the red button, which may actually be a sign of some growth, or at least the sign of fear, <laughs> if nothing else. But it felt, it, you know, it felt like he was tempted, right? And I think everyone is a little tempted because they see the money. It's this ca carrot, you know, dangling out in front of them. But... It comes down to the old man, because they're going in reverse order. So it starts with him and ends with the old man, and it's completely tied. There's, there's what, 201 people left. There's 100 for, 100 against, and he's the one that goes up to make the final call. And the whole time I was thinking, oh, this is, this is a well-shot scene. I like what they're doing here. But ultimately, I don't believe for a second that they're going to be let to go home. And then immediately, he picked, hit the red button, and they were let to go home. Why do they keep saying it that way? Let to go home. That's not... A sentence that's proper um but i was surprised i was genuinely surprised and i think this decision and this ep you know episode one i was even theorizing like what what are they going to do for nine episodes because there's only six games and is there going to be more stuff at the end after the games and obviously this episode completely takes place without a game and we'll get to another game next episode presumably but I think what this episode achieves, it achieves two broadly main things with a lot of little things in, in you know, included in those. Um, I think the most obvious thing that this choice to let them all go home achieves is that it lets us spend time with all of what we now consider to be the main characters. Episode one, we focused on a four, five, six. It was his story. It was his episode. And it was only in that last 10 minutes, which I, I complimented the show for doing such a good job of making me uh like notice and just recognize at least five or six characters so distinctly by the end and this episode we actually get to see them all in the real world we get to see all of the situations so well i always expected the show was going to try and build sympathy and make me care about the, our, our main set of characters by and large i did not expect it to happen like this uh, and it's actually quite simple, is that they kind of get the same treatment that we got with 4, 5, 6 last episode. We get to see what their lives are like. We get to see who's dependent on them. We get to see w what they're fighting for and what their motivations are. And I'll go through them, you know, in a bit and talk about each of the, the characters. Uh, so that's great, right? I was expecting the outcome of that to happen. I was not expecting it to happen by them going home and getting to see all that. And even 4, 5, 6 gets extra layers and gets a new level of i think empathy from the audience in this episode and i'll talk about the key moment or two that i think really captures that the other thing that it accomplishes though this episode where they let them all go home and 
they're out in the real world, and they all have to choose. They have the choice after a day or two, they get the card, they have the choice of going back. This is freaking genius. It's genius for a few reasons. The first one is that it gives them all more agency. It means that they are not just, like, kidnapped or tricked into playing this life or death game. They are choosing to do this because ultimately their lives, where they are, uh, whatever it may be, they are willing to sign up for these life or death games. And it means that while they're going to be scared in the games, they're going to be scared of death, they're always going to be scared, it's going to be very different to that first time because they go in knowing that this is what the stakes are. Uh, so intre- so immediately, immediately you have made the second game, whenever we get it, next episode or whatever, you've made that feel different already. You're, you're already not just repeating yourself as a show, as a story. You've already changed the game a little bit for us as the audience. That's great. But it gives them more agency. It makes their motivations far more interesting. It means that they are not just, you know, like they're in a Saw movie or like they're in an Escape Room movie or, or even a, a, you know, a good movie like Cube where, you know, they, they don't know why they're there or they, they do understand why they're there. But like, because honestly, like last ep- or during this episode, I, I, I legitimately at the start was thinking like, I, I don't even believe that the winner is going to get to leave. Like a part of me thinks the winner is just going to get shot in the head. Uh, like after they win, right? No one's going to get to like talk about this. But this episode also showed that these people will let them back into the real world. I mean, may- I mean, I'm not sure they will at the end necessarily. Like, I still think there's a chance they're just going to kill whoever wins afterwards. But I'm not as sure of it now. Like before, it was like like a ninety something percent chance that that was the plan. <laughs> now I'm actually I have enough doubt because they're clearly very good at covering their tracks. They're good at making sure no one can sort of follow up on the story, and. Like, it puts that seed of doubt, enough seed of doubt, enough reasonable doubt in the viewer's mind that you don't just assume they're all screwed. That's really smart. It's almost a trope at this point of, of those types of movies, uh, specifically, that this circumvents by having this episode and having them all go home. Um, so that's another thing that it accomplishes, but I think the main thing is the is the character agency and choice. They all choose to go back and that completely changes how it feels. It changes what the dynamic is, and it it, it gives it it, it, may, it really makes them feel that instead of just trying to survive, which they still will be doing, they're still going to try and survive, but it makes it feel that they're all fighting for something. In two episodes, the show has given like five or six characters things to fight for, uh, to varying degrees, and most of them are pretty sympathetic. Uh, that's really good. I, I, almost to the point where they, they, in the last 10 minutes of episode 1 especially kind of sell you on the show and why it's worth watching. But I think episode 1 and 2 as a pair actually sell the show even better. Uh, because this was sort of proving that it knows how to actually write characters and make you care about the characters a little bit. Um, I, I don't think anything in this episode is as exciting to watch as that last 10 minutes of episode 1. But as a whole, it might be the better episode. At least, it, as a whole, it accomplishes something more special, I think. Uh, and is, is a more impressive piece of writing than episode one. But uh, that's why they're great as a pair, though, because it's showing all of its strengths. Uh, so episode two is really freaking good um, and achieves something that isn't just for this episode. It achieves something that is going to matter for every single episode after this it's made us care about a bunch of characters and it's avoided the pratfalls of the the sort of subgenre that kind of fits into you know like i say the people who are either kidnapped or tricked into a a game of sorts uh some undisclosed location where they have to fight for their life uh you could like i say saw escape room even you know cube uh, with the three examples i have um, there's definitely more uh, but that's kind of, like, how it could end up. And I don't think the first episode really felt too much like that. Like, it, you know, it, it's quirky enough and it's it's got its own distinct presence enough, but that 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 feeling of, like, they're all kind of screwed. Like, I mean, not that I actually thought they were all def- definitely going to die. I mean, especially since I know that season two has been, <laughs> been greenlit. But 
But, they, you know, I, I, I don't believe that whoever's running this was planning on letting them live. I'm sure that some of them were going to live, like they were going to fight their way out of it or get lucky or escape or something, you know, like whatever it may be. But I didn't think the, the, the evil or the villains or whoever, that they were actually going to let them go. And this episode said, nope. Like, we're going to surprise you. We're going to do different things. And we're going to do things that actually add to the story and make it more engaging as a result. So, uh, excellent. Excellent. As, as far as theories, like, I, I know, like, maybe, like, theorizing who's behind all this. Uh, like, right now, I don't think I've got enough to really be that interested or even have any ideas, to be honest, other than just the super rich making a game for other rich people to watch or possibly uh i don't know or something they're streaming to people in the dark web although i get again like it's a lot harder to hide that this is happening if you're broadcasting it so i, I don't know like I, I really don't have any theories as of yet as to what's going on in terms of like who's running this and why they're doing it but uh as a as a character show, as a character survival show, uh, it's it's hitting a lot of buttons. Uh, so to actually talk about the various characters, I think one of the one of the one of the lines early on. So when they get let out, and uh, four five six is dumped on the road, he's with pickpocket, uh, and that's just what her name's going to be. So just uh, <laughs> roll with me. Uh, He's with Pickpocket, and she, like, he bites off her hand ties, and she's about to leave him, and he has to kind of beg a little bit, and she's like, you're just, you're just going to harass me for that money I took. He's like, he promises, I swear on my mother's life, I won't, like, harass you. And it's a funny moment, it's a funny in-character moment, where as soon as his hands are free, he starts hopping towards her, saying, give me my money, give me my money, like, he immediately goes back on his word. And again, it's sort of showing his faults. Uh, but the line in hindsight is so powerful in this episode for both characters, actually, is Pickpocket turns and says, I guess that's what you think of your mother, or, you know, something to that effect. And what's so good about this in hindsight is that as we follow the episode, we follow these two characters, uh, 456's story is about his mother. It's about her uh, being in hospital, she has diabetes, she needs an operation, and they can't afford to, to have it and you know they can't afford it because he's been stealing from her right he he's he's put her in this position where now she is on a clock she's in jeopardy and it's his fault it's by and large his fault and he can't do anything about it here he goes crawling to his his ex uh for money um he is probably at his lowest at, you know a couple of points in this episode that we've seen him at and so that line in hindsight was great foreshadowing, but it's also great foreshadowing for the other plot, uh, for, for Pickpocket's plot, because Pickpocket, we find out, has a little brother who's staying at, like, a home right now, an orphanage or, or something, and their parents are trapped in North Korea. So she's been stealing money to try and, like, pay for, you know, someone to sneak them out. And she's dealing with a lot of shady characters. She makes one basically piss himself uh, in this episode. But, you know, we see her with a little brother, and we see that their goal is to get her parents back. So it's very noble. So when you think back to that line of dialogue where she says to him, I guess that's what you think of your mother, she's saying that when her entire goal, her entire thing is to get her parents back. So it's particularly offensive to her how little he just kind of belittled his own mother, how, how much he just disregarded what he said. Um, and, all, and ultimately, yeah, like, people say, I swear on so-and-so's life, and it doesn't really mean that much. It's just kind of a phrase, most of the time, to be honest. It is, it's not actually a, a, a firm statement about uh, anything, really. But it's, it's just a really nice line of dialogue that, in hindsight, once you go through both of their plots, uh, suddenly has this double meaning, uh, or triple meaning, even, arguably. So, uh, really good stuff uh, there as well. Um, and just to stick on 456 for a second, um, I would say that he has probably, you know, he, he goes to the police station, which, you know, ties into some plot and, and some other things. He, he meets, uh, you know, the good son, uh, who kind of confesses just how mu in much trouble he's in, and he's, like, maybe got more debt and more financial trouble than almost anyone else there, because he's been, you know, laundering or doing corrupt stuff, and the police are after him. But 456, when he goes to his ex and he asks for money, and there's this awkward moment when the, the stepdad comes in and 
uh, he, he leaves immediately. You feel like the, the close up on the stepdad's face is particularly telling. The way his face just drops, like, what is that bum doing in my house? Kind of attitude. And he goes out and it's pouring a rain. And he says, he came here for money, right? And he tries to hand him an envelope with money in it. And. And no, and you you can maybe speculate, you know, as four, five, six. I mean, I believe he, I mean, I don't know if I believe that he would be able to, like, he would probably make some bad decisions before he could, but I believe that 456, when he says, I will pay you back, I think he is genuinely trying to mean it when he says it. I think he is almost taken aback by the possible kindness that this might be. Of course, it takes a turn, though, because the stepdad says, you don't have to pay me back, but stay away from my family, Uh, which is, you know, cold as shit, because his daughter is... (laughs) And his family. So I think this might be the moment where like I think he's always been likable. Like there's there's small moments of kindness, like he he has a nice happy quirkiness about him that even though he's been making a lot of bad decisions in the first two episodes and he's been stealing from his mother, there's enough that he, there was kind of a likable quality to him anyway. But I think this moment where he punches the stepdad and for the first time doesn't treat money like it's the be-all end-all even though he does need it for his mother right even though it is an essential thing right now this is the first time i think he just outright refuses to take money he throws it back at him and you know says like you know you think money's the most important thing or something like that um this felt like a genuine moment of growth (laughs) it felt like a genuine moment of like there's a line there's a line where morally he like lands on a good side here and it's hard not to kind of root for him a little bit more after this it's hard not to kind of and of course the daughter sees it and he looks like an asshole for punching him uh but i think this is a big win for the 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 character for the audience and uh but he's at his lowest after this you know he feels terrible um we should talk about the detective who you know presumably his little brother was one of the people who were killed in the first episode at the game and he recognizes the card from his brother's place with when uh, 456 was in the police station. So he goes to see him. But 456, and the line that really got me was 456 says, like, I don't think I could be of use to anyone right now. Look at me. Like, you know, he's, he's so, he's in such a shitty place. And then, of course, he sees the card. And um, so, you know, in terms of a plot, you know, excitement in terms of, you know, unraveling the mystery. We have this detective who's following them all to the island, or at least following him, you know, he's he's tailing them in the in the van uh, at the end of the episode. So we have that, and we also have Pickpocket staying awake by holding her breath. So we, we have a couple of leads to kind of, like, un, you know, get some hints and teases for the mystery, which is nice. Um, Other stuff we have, we also have... um. Uh, the good son, like, you know, there's a heartbreaking scene with his mother where she kind of, you know, the police come to see her and ask if she knows where he is, and it's kind of this stark reality kind of hitting her. Um, But even he, obviously he's really concerned about, like, his own troubles, but he has all these moments of kindness early on. He's, he's with the guy, I don't have a good name, uh, I'll just call him by his name. <laughs> uh, Ali. Yes, the guy who saved uh, 456 by grabbing him last episode, so... He doesn't have money for his bus home. He needs to use a phone uh, and a few other things. And, you know, the the good son kind of, like, you know, gives him all this. He makes sure he has money for the bus. He doesn't want it to be paid back. He just says, make sure you get home, all that stuff. So he has moments of kindness. Uh, so you see him and he's at his worst, of course. And he and a nice touch here is that he was he was one who even though he came up with the clause he was the one who said hey you've got a clause in the contract that we can all go home if we all agree to or if a majority agree to but he actually voted no he voted to stay and what's funny to me about that is or what was what's a nice touch about that is that he doesn't actually need to go through like something to like want to go back he actually is already at his worst place you know he sees his mother but he can't go talk to her he's just sitting like drinking himself to possibly death <laughs> in a in a bathtub so he doesn't actually need the progression to want to go back he already wanted to stay so his is actually a slightly different story to everyone else's and then alternatively uh you know ali goes to his place of work and for him you actually really feel you feel super bad because He's just, like, owed wages. Like, his, his boss is a scummy asshole who's not given him anything. 
and he sees there's an envelope of money on the desk. He demands to be paid. Uh, there's a bit of a struggle when they're walking through. It's like a factory, and by accident, th- when they're struggling, the the boss's hand gets caught in like the uh, the st- like the rollers, like it's like a like a press of some kind. And his hand, like, you see blood spurting, and his hand flat. It's, re- it's actually a really great moment of gore, to be honest. I can't, I can't, as a horror fan, I was kind of into this 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 unfortunate incident, <laughs> shall we call it? Uh, so, and he's got a wife and kid, he asks them to get out of the country, and he's going to, you know, go and try and get some money for them. But he gives them the envelope, because he, he grabs the envelope of money before it leaves. So, all these characters are, all of a sudden have this sympathy, and we see the old man briefly again, who all, who, who wants to go back, he's already decided he wants to go back, because he doesn't have much time left, so he, he's, he, he at least seemed to be enjoying himself. Um, it's actually a really sweet moment when he runs into the old man. Uh, it really does have a, you know, he says, I think he literally says, it's a small world. Uh, but it does kind of have that, that feeling to it. Uh, but it's actually kind of nice to run into him that, you know, any, like, contrivance that you might want to, uh, throw at it, I, I think you can just let it go. Uh, honestly. Um, and then the last guy, you know, the tattoo man, snake tattoo man, he, he, he's the one who's not sympathetic. He's still just kind of a piece of shit. Uh, he owes money to a casino, they come for him, and he actually stabs the guy that, that sort of turned him into the casino guys, and then jumps off a bridge. Uh, so, I think it's notable that he's not sympathetic, and they might try and give him some kind of redemption, but for now, he's definitely an antagonist to the rest of the, the crew. He's going to be the one that, when they're playing the game, might try and screw them over, right? Uh, it's the one we expect to... I mean, other people might make a heel turn, but he we expect to screw them over. So... That's something that they definitely want to play with, and I think that's very, that, I think it's a very intentional choice that we don't see him for a lot of the episode. Like his little plot to sort of just establish why he owes money and why he needs it doesn't come in until very late in the episode, and I think that's because it wanted to keep him at a distance because we're not supposed to feel as connected to him as everyone else. So, you know, smart. Uh, but we get this great sequence at the end where they're all waiting at the spots to get picked up. They've all made the choice to go back. And like I say, them all making this choice, them all choosing to go back, inherently makes the risks and makes everything they're about to do more meaningful and more exciting. And, you know, and, and at the very least, it shakes it up from the first time they played the game. Game two is going to feel different from game one because of that. And if this show continues being as smart as it is, it might find a way to make each game feel distinctly different. Not just in terms of the game it's play. Obviously, the game itself is going to be different, but I mean the dynamics of how the characters feel going into each game. How they react and respond. Are they keeping, you know, because this time they're expecting death. This time they know the, the stakes. Um, and how quickly do we start killing off our main characters? Who's the first of the main characters to go? Like, there's a lot of things now at play. So... Yeah, Squid Game is very good. Uh, it's a shame <laughs> I didn't watch it when it first came out. But I don't remember w- w- why I was so busy, but uh, here we are now. Uh, that's episode 2 of Squid Game. Um, I'm sure I've glossed over a detail or two. Not to, not to worry. Not to worry. Uh, but yes. Uh, so, I'll see you for episode 3 soon. Thank you very much for watching. Uh, if you want to support everything, hit the like and subscribe and ding the bell. Especially, you know, on this one, you know, I'm going back and doing this, uh, you know, when it's not going to exactly break out and get a ton of general views on YouTube. So, uh, hit, hit the like button, let me know you're uh, enjoying them. Uh, keep the keep the, the happy motivation going to keep them coming. Uh, but you can also support us financially over at patreon.com slash TV for as little as $1 per month. Uh, and keep all the content coming that way. And of course, uh, get us on Twitter at mail underscore fuzz for channel updates. But otherwise, that is me. So thank you once again for watching or listening. I always appreciate it. Keep watching TV. Have you got any vanilla?